Hello and welcome, my name is Romney and I'm the founder of Global Self Publishing. What I want to do in this video is just to go over some of the steps that I think you should be taking if you really want to achieve the $1,000 per month mark. Now even achieving $100 per month to begin with is a fantastic achievement. But what happens if you want to step it up a notch? What happens if you want to transition from employment to running your own publishing business like you would if you're publishing books to Amazon KDP or Ingram Spark. So what needs to take place for you to try and reach that $1,000 mark? Let's try and cover that right now. So what I've done is written down a few of the important and critical steps that I think you need to consider if you would really love to reach that $1,000 per month mark. Now, I'm not just talking about book revenue. I'm talking about author royalties. Now, you would obviously have to take tax out of your author royalties, but after advertising costs and after all the revenue costs and things like that, if you can get to $1,000 clear, what would that look like and how can you achieve that? Now, my background, if you're not familiar with this, I started publishing back in December of 2019. I've now been publishing since that time, but I've actually also expanded my publishing uh, to cover a number of different things. So uh, that also includes courses that I help people with their self-publishing and trying to elevate their self-publishing so that they actually can leave their full-time job. Now, when you're self-publishing, there are obviously a number of things to consider um, and important things to consider, and you can't just expect things to happen. You need to make things happen, and you need to take action. So I'm going to refer to my notes now, and we're going to go through each of the key areas that I think are important if you want to meet and exceed the $1,000 per month mark. Let's get into it right now. So step number one would be to become proficient and almost master niche research. Now, you would have heard a lot about niche research and the importance of it, and I'm gonna stress that again, because without doing proper niche research, you really do find yourself in a difficult position because you don't wanna be creating books where there's a really high need but also high competition. You need to try and find those niches that do have the high need but lower competition. And you also need to be aware that if you are creating books, you need to consider the keywords that you're using as well. So if you're trying to get into a high competition niche, expect that the keywords will also be high competition when you look at your marketing and advertising. So if you were trying to create a coloring book um, about the zoo, then if you had zoo coloring book for kids, that keyword you'd probably find would be very competitive. Therefore, the cost of ad spend is gonna be very high. So it's not just the niche research you're looking for in regards to customer, um, I guess, um, intent of buying or you know, uh, maybe look at the way that customers are searching for books that they want, but you're also looking at the data and also the keywords and the competitiveness of them so that when you do create your ads, you're not spending, spending a fortune on them. So niche research is a critical area. Can't emphasize that enough. It will help you to sell more books, but also it'll help you reduce your cost of spend with marketing and advertising if you can find a niche that has low competition but a higher need. Uh, I've got a course if you want to do that. I'll just link that in the description below. The second one would be to consider publishing to a broader marketplace because if you just limit yourself to Amazon KDP and not consider other ones like Ingram Spark or even Draft to Digital. You could significantly be reducing the opportunity of global expansion. So when you publish with Amazon KDP, you obviously are looking at those marketplaces. I think there's 12 or 14 marketplaces of Amazon. But if you look at the marketplace of Ingram Spark, they distribute to over 40,000. Uh, different channels, and that could be online, brick and mortar stores, libraries, universities, schools. They've got a huge variety of distribution channels as well. So, unless your book doesn't meet the criteria and uh, the integrity guidelines of um, making sure that you're not doing uh, no content books or even some of the forms of low content books, then you should seriously consider doing it. Now, if you're 
unsure about how ISBNs work because you'd need to purchase an ISBN, but you don't have to pay for any upload fees for Ingram Spark. If you're a bit confused about the ISBN, I'll link a video below and that can help you understand it. But if understanding what an ISBN is or purchasing an ISBN is what is holding you back, then you need to move forward with that because you could be missing out on hundreds or thousands of dollars per year by allowing your book to be distributed to a wider distribution channel. So that's another amazing way that you can build your uh, your revenue or your author royalties by expanding your distribution, not just focusing on one. Just say your Amazon account was terminated or some of your books disappeared from Amazon then you'd be left in a position where you would compromise your business and your cash flow. So really consider expanding your distribution to other platforms. Number three, if you're really wanting to get to $1,000, you need to consider marketing and advertising. And as this space of self-publishing gets uh, more crowded and busier, then you need to stand out. And again, going back to step number one, your niche research, that's where that's so important because when you go to market and advertise, you need to allocate a budget for that. And if you're confident with your book, if you've spent the time to create a great book, you've completed the right niche research, then you should have all the confidence to market that book. And by marketing and advertising, it gives you a leverage across other people that don't do it. And you've got a great way through Amazon ads. You could also consider other ways, um, whether it be articles through LinkedIn, uh, YouTube videos, uh, you could do Google ads, Facebook ads. There's a variety of different ways that you can market and advertise your book. So if you're wanting to get to $1,000 per month clear, then you need to spend some money to make people aware of your book. Because if they're not aware of it, then how are they ever going to purchase that book? So let's go to the next one. So number four, you need to consider being a producer and not a consumer of information. Now, when you're creating your books, you're working and focusing on creating something that could have a long-term passive income uh, tail or trail, meaning that once you create your book and you spend the time to create and publish and market and launch your book, then the passive income stream that could come from that could last for many, many years. But if you're constantly consuming content, watching lots of YouTube videos like this one, and but doing it on multiple different channels and spending all your time doing that, then that's not going to create a single dollar for you if you're consistently being a consumer. You need to switch your mindset to be a producer of content and information. The more you can create, the more opportunities are that your digital assets can then go out and sell across the world. So really focus on reducing the amount of content that you absorb be conscious of the amount of content that you can create and help others. And therefore, you'll be able to create a lot more income and move closer to that $1,000 per month. And finally, number five, one of the key reasons people fail to get that $1,000 per month mark is that they don't invest in their knowledge and also the tools that they're using. They're trying to do it on a shoestring, trying to have a very, very small budget. If you're not willing to invest in your knowledge and the tools that you use, then the journey will be extremely slow for you and you'll find that the time it takes will cost you actually more money than what you're saving. So what I want you to do is ensure you, you do limit the amount of things that you are consuming, so you're not uh, a consumer all the time, but you do need to absorb some information to become um, better and more knowledgeable. So a short course about publishing or uh, advertising or launching a book or how to create covers, those sorts of courses are good if they're short and sharp and you can try and get through it in a week's time. And therefore, it's not just constantly watching information and watching YouTube channels week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out. At least if with a course, you can consume that information, but apply that information in, with actionable steps. So I want you to really focus on the tools and the knowledge that you invest in yourself. That is going to be your greatest investment if you do that. Now, if you want to make that $1,000, you obviously need to follow those key rules, right? So make sure, going back to my notes here, you must become 
proficient at niche research and making sure that you understand how to do it and to do it properly and the rules and steps that are involved with that. You need to consider publishing to a broader marketplace like uh, uh, Ingram Spark or draft to digital You need to market and advertise your books. Therefore, more people become aware of it, and then your books will then feature higher in the algorithm, which then sells more of those books over the longer period of time. You need to focus on being a producer and not a consumer of information. That is one of those critical steps. And finally, I want you to invest in yourself. Invest in your knowledge. Invest in the tools that you use to help publish better books. Now, it's taken me quite some time, or initially took me quite some time, to reach that $1,000 mark. But now it's become um, one of those things where I'm actually focusing on uh, even trying to generate up to $10,000 per month with my publishing uh, clear and that does take a lot of time. It in, I guess it involves a lot of research. It involves having the right tool. It involves having the right knowledge and experience. So therefore, what I want to do is continue to create high quality books. Therefore, they will then continue to sell year in, year out. And I can then pull back from that and share a lot of my information and knowledge that I'm experiencing to help people like you. So I hope you found this video helpful. I want you to ensure that you take action whenever you get that opportunity. When you've watched this video, I want you to go and reassess what you're doing with your books. You need to think about, uh, so right now we're, we're going to Q4. So you need to consider the types of books that you have, how you're marketing, how you're advertising, your strategy, and ensuring that you've got all your books and all your steps lined up so that you can make the most of the busiest time of the year as well. Because if you're going to make $1,000 in the month, then Q4 is when that will likely happen. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you wanted to check out more of my videos, just check out my YouTube channel. If you want more information about self-publishing, just go to globalselfpublishing.com and all the information will be there. So until my next video, I look forward to seeing you then. If you'd like to learn more about self-publishing, just make sure you visit my website, globalselfpublishing.com. And on this website, you'll find a ton of free resources. So if you scroll down on the first page, you'll see an introduction to the website. You'll also get to see some of the courses and content that I've created for you. If you go all the way up to the top here, you can actually also go to the different resources that you can download for free. So here's a number of resources that you can see straight away. Also, if you go to self-publishing courses, you can see that I've also got my premium self-publishing course on publishing children's book. I've also got free access to my two-hour KDP Fast Track course. Take a look at the preview for that. And then further down, you'll see the other courses that are available, plus a sign-up if you want to access all those courses for just $19 per month. And then finally, I've got software and tools. This provides an outline of the tools that I use for my publishing, and it's a great opportunity to see what I use. I don't use a lot of software programs, but the ones that I do use are the ones that have helped me significantly to elevate my publishing for the last five years. So thanks again. Remember to visit globalselfpublishing.com and all the resources that you need are just in one place.